Okay, then let's go ahead and start talking about um, uh, basic bit editing, cleaning up, and basic programming. Um, a couple of times last class, um, people asked about um, doing things in R that take a little bit more in terms of uh, programming. And so we're going to Start off with some straightforward stuff, and then towards the end of the talk, we have a look at a little bit more of a complicated, slightly, I mean slightly more complicated um, approach to <coughs> programming in R to actually make some changes to a data set. So let me sort of put it on a scale. Um, what one of the things that we did yesterday? Um, I'm sorry, that, that those notes, are they on our doctoral? These will not be on your okay. doctoral notes, but I will um, you know, get them uploaded um, today. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, so one of the things that we did yesterday, uh, when we were looking at the high school suicide uh, data set, um, we noticed that there was that one outlier of 140,000 in terms of enrollment, which is obviously the correct value. And what we did right after lunch was we looked at how to change that one value in the data set. And that was sort of using the command right at the top here, where the first thing just prints out what's in the data set. You're basically saying to R in the high school suicide data set at the 103rd row and the third column, what or 108th row and the third column, what's that number? And so R will spit out the number that's at that particular location. So it allows you to see what's there. And then the same command with the information at the end, add replacement value or equal replacement value of 1400, uh, takes that value and puts it into that same location. So you have a chance to see what's at one specific cell in the data set, and you can change what's in one specific cell in the data set. And that's useful if you have one cell that you need to change. It doesn't work so well if you have 30 or 40 or 100 cells to change. <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a command that basically will change all of one set of values in the entire data set. So we're sort of going to go to the opposite situation from one cell to making changes on mass for the entire data set. And this is the place, or this is the command that you would use if you were dealing with the education data set, the SAS data set, you all encounter those negative eights. You want to get rid of all of them. I'm assuming you want to get rid of all of them. Uh, so you need, ideally you want to have one command that will do that, just one command gets, takes care of them all, changes it to NA. Uh, so we're making mass changes to the entire data set. And the command that you see right here is the rough format for that command that will basically change everything in the data set or all the occurrences of, in this case, negative eight in the data set. And so what you see is uh, the data set name, whatever the name of your data set is, with square brackets. And then you have the data set name again, um, an equal sign, except no, but it's a double equal sign. So it's not just one, it's two equal signs strung together, equals the value that you want to get rid of or the value that you want to replace. So we want to get rid of all the negative eights, so we're going to do that. Then you have this uh, left pointing arrow, the less than sign, the minus sign, and then we're going to replace it with an A. Not applicable, which is actually what minus eight uh, means in uh, a data set that we have. Note, by the way, that this applies to any type of global replacement that you want to do in the data set. You could change this to um, a one or a zero, and it would go through the data set and replace all those ones or zeros, whatever number you put in there, with the alternative value. So you could change, for example, when you're looking at the um, Titanic data set, zero and one for survived, no was not survived, one was survived. You could replace the zero here with um, in quotation marks, no, 
and it would look for all the cases of zero in the Titanic data set and replace them with no. So let's go ahead, if you go ahead to your um, SAS, your uh, educational data set, And if you will, um, my educational data set, I've shortened out just to FRSS. But I, I, I don't know what name you have for your particular educational data set. So if you will do the educational data set name, square brackets, then the educational data set name again. Double equal sign. Educational data set name, square brackets, educational data set name, double brackets, then that value that you want to replace, minus eight in quotation marks. I have the data set negative, a negative nine, two, so. Okay. So you then you would uh, do it once the negative, you can replace it with negative nine as well. So you do it, run it twice, and that would cover all the time. A left pointing arrow, a lesson sign, minus sign to get a left, left pointing arrow, and then NA, the value that you want to replace it with. And once you run that, once you run that command and press enter, uh, you should be able to scroll through your SAS data set, your education data set, and there should be no more negative eights that are minus eight. So you should see in eights. So you can scroll through it, double check. So after you press return on that command, nothing will come underneath it. It won't say they've been removed. Exactly. So it doesn't, uh, all you would see is the, uh, the prompt again, which means it's finished the command, but we didn't ask it to report back anything, so it won't. Okay. Uh, which is why it says, if you want to look through the data set, scroll through it, you should start see, seeing NA values instead of negative eight. Yes. Does anybody else have any other questions about this particular command? Um, we haven't been able to do that in the interview. We can't find that found folder that has that SAS in it. Yes. We have it both our things now in the file folder. We want to get for it right yes. there. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do the PC You have to save it outside of the file, outside of the. Okay, so it's here. Thank you. 
are labeled as zero and one for survive instead of survive and didn't survive or yes and no. Or we're, so we would want one of the things that we could do is we could replace that column of zeros and ones with yes and no or survive and die. But we can't do a global replacement because that's going to replace the other values as well. We don't want to do that. So we have to focus on one column, uh, in this case, the survive column. So I'm going to show you this thing right here. We first a little bit of programming, a little bit of a hopefully, really hopefully, a simple straightforward example of how you can start to program um, in R that will allow you to accomplish things like change the values in a in one column in a data set, or even if you wanted to create a new column, create a new variable in your data set, would allow you to do that. <clears throat> Now, I'm feeling pretty sure that the anxiety level just went up a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so let me reduce, uh, try and reduce that, but let's walk through it and talk about what it means. And then we're going to work on programming. We can actually just put it in one or two lines. You don't have to uh, set it up like that. That's just to help us make sense of what's going on there. I actually have the exact same command as one long line here. That. So let's walk through it. I figure this stuff might take a reasonable amount of the time we have left just to walk through and to see what's going on there. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, I can't get the base Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, the commands up on the screen and just talk about what they mean or what they do in terms of allowing us to change the values of the call. Uh, so we are moving a little bit, just a very little bit into. Uh, the programming side of things. Let me begin with the. <laughs> Let me begin with the first line then. Okay. So the first line right here, you notice it is essentially one word for, and then a whole bunch of stuff in the parentheses. Um, that for starts what's called a for loop, basically a loop where it's doing the same thing over and over and over again. <coughs> and that's what the for, that's what a for loop does. It just repeats the same thing over and over. So what you see here is this part right here is for each row in the Titanic data set, starting at row number one and n row Titanic is just a, a way of saying the end of the data set. So the very last row, 3,809 or whatever. <laughs> um, we could replace that fact. I will replace that with So we have every row, every person in the Titanic data set. And what we're telling uh, R with this first command is for the whole data set, starting at the first row, going to the end, for each row, do something. So walk through each row, one all the way to 1,309. And that's all that first line says, is we're going to do something 1,309 times once for each row. You mean you don't need the second parenthesis anymore? Say The second parenthesis anymore? So we're going to do the same thing repeatedly to the data set. And what we're going to do to the data set is in the curly braces here. Start here and end at the end. So the, all the rest of this is, this is what we're going to do. So for loop just tells us to do the same command repeatedly over and over again, uh, as many times as we tell it. And that's that one colon 1309. That's what that tells us how often it's going to do it. Now, what are we going to do? Well, you'll recognize a phrase like this, Titanic survived. You'll recognize that that's the survived variable in the Titanic data set. The only difference is we have this little row thing at the end. And what this row um, index at the end is essentially going to say is row one, row two, row three, row four. So for that variable, I can't the survive variable with Titanic, it's going to go to row one, row two, row three, row four, all the way down to the end. And what it's going to do is if we have a value of zero, go the double equal sign there, value of zero, it's going to change it to a die. Or you can change it to, to no, did not survive. So you, you can change whatever value you want to right here. Um, so we have for this particular row in this variable, if that value is zero, we're going to change that value to die. So we're just going to replace the zeros with the word died. Or if you want to use something a little less intense, no, they did not survive. You can just replace something no. And then the rest of the formula is, or the rest of the equation here is, okay, if the value is not zero, if it's a one, because that's the only other possible value, well, that, that, that cell is going to be changed to survive. 
or if you want to use the word yes instead, convert all to no and yes. And so that command basically for each row, that variable each row with the zero will be replaced with the word died, and otherwise it will be replaced with the word survived. And that will change that entire column, but not touch anything else in the data set. Let me just check. Anybody have any questions or comments about <coughs> sort of the logic of what's happening there? Are we supposed to type in the else? Because uh, I got an error when I type in the else. I will be asking you to type it in. Um, if you get an error when you run, error when you run the, let me know and I can help identify the source of the error. Um, question. So, um, I haven't done the whole thing yet, but I just have a question about it. Could you do it row by row, like you separated it at the top, or do you have to put the entire thing in like you done under the or? Could you do it step by step, how you've got it broken down? I uh, mean, with each yes. uh, each row on a separate line? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay, and that's how we should break it down if we do. You could break it down like that, and I actually broke it down like that just so we can see what's happening. When I entered it, I actually just entered it as one long, one long thing, right? One long thing. Okay. You could do either one. You could do it either way. All right. Yes. Would it work if you did in row titanic, or do you have to put the thirteen? The 1309 without 309. Oh, you could use N or Titanic. Um, and that would go to the end. Yes. Um, and that would actually apply to any length then. It's just right. N row is basically number of rows. So. Yes. Yes. On the more part, you duplicated the Titanic dollar sign, Titanic dollar sign. Say the beat, sorry. On that on the or part. Like on the bottom, at the very right hand side below where you. Oh, okay. Or right. this command or this command are the same thing. Right, because you've duplicated the Titanic dollar sign, and then on the next line it says Titanic dollar sign again. Not there, to the right, all the way to the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have more. Oh, there are more. This when I typed it into one line, I basically just did this, and each of these spots at the end, I just put a space and continue with the next line. Okay, so like row in, like on the very first line, or row in, should there be spaces? Yeah. Yes, yeah. So, um, what I did was I would have typed the first part here, then I put the curly brace, I just put a space, and then I continued right into here, space continued right into here, so I ended up with everything just one long line of everything. <laughs> just check any other questions about that whole command. Is there any way to undo the button? Uh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> Uh, which actually is important because I will mention two things. Number one, uh, two things. Uh, number one, whenever you're doing your analyses for your doctoral dissertation, write this down and remember this because it's important. Never, ever work on your original data set, always work on a copy. So that if you do make an irretrievable error, you have 
not put yourself in a really bad situation. Always work on a copy of your data set, not the original. Uh, in terms of errors, uh, it is possible you could actually work, um, write the same command, reverse the values, and replace the values with the original values, and you can see you correct the errors after. Yes. Yes. The other thing I wanted to mention is what we've been talking about is we're changing the values in that one variable, the survive variable, or we're basically changing the values in that variable itself. Um, note that the other thing that you could do is you could leave that variable as it is and create a new variable with those alternate values. If I were to do something like this, if I were to do something like this, You'll note that the change values now there's a variable called survived categorical. And R is smart enough to know that if I'm providing a new variable, it will make a new variable called survived categorical with those terms and it won't touch the original variable. So I've essentially created a new one, which would go right at the end. It would have the word die, uh, words die and survive, and the original variable would still be okay, would still be in touch. So that's one way of developing new variables, but it's a legitimate thing to do. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> Any other questions about the command? Um, let me just check how many people have entered everything in the row and then returned. <laughs> If you have an error, uh, I'll come around and I'll see if I can uh, help you with errors. Yeah. 
Okay, so everybody has an idea then of how to take or how to change the set of values in one particular variable or change the extension that to create a new variable with the alternate values. <laughs> Okay, if theoretically you're somewhat okay with that, uh, then what I'm going to suggest is let's go ahead and try it one more time. If we're working on cleaning up data sets, one of the things you might want to look at or consider with the Titanic data set is just something simple like male and female. Uh, change it to capital, uh, capital N, capital F. And this command would allow you to do exactly the same thing. <laughs> so, how would you write? Um, something like that to just change those values and capitalize essentially male and female. Exact same procedure. I'm going to start writing it out here. Excuse me. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so you do the same thing. You're basically going to run through every row. And if panic falls correctly. So I basically say if uh, that variable, uh, the Variable sex or gender that they could call them. If it's lowercase M for in male, make it uppercase. Otherwise, or else. What if you were changing the age category to adult, minor, and you know, if you you're doing three different ones? You could actually end up doing something very similar. Um, following the same basic logic or structure, you would have to add a little bit more. So, uh, for example, the one that I'm working on right now where I'm changing now um, male to make it uppercase or capitalize. If I were to take age, for example, um, I'm going to leave that one. I'm going to go ahead and just talk about yours for a second. Sorry. That's fine. Is it a different one you're typing now? What's yes, I'm just trying to sort of get an answer a question that I can come back to that one. Okay, because you didn't put a little squiggly thing on the end. Sex. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so that should finish off that one. The end your question. Okay, the four is actually the word next because it starts. And the four can only be so all the way through from those ones that are going to be 13 and up. So that's the four. The four is the four. The four is the four. If it's telling you, if you found a male, everything else is starting. So you still have to say, that's what it is. So there's no one for your class. Okay. So you didn't have to write else on the thing whenever you put female up there. You're still in that column, but it's not in every single room. It's there. Oh, it's there. There is another one. That would be nice. That would be nice. We need to suggest that. I will. Okay, to answer your question, if I were to look at the taking an age column and changing the category minor, adult, senior, I would do something that looks like. I would start off by doing something that looks like this. Again, the same thing in the beginning for each row. Uh, in the age category, if the value is less than 19, if they're less than 19 or less than 18, they're a minor. Well, and so uh, if their age is less than or 19 here, then age category, the new variable, they're going to be marked with an M for minor. And then if it's less than 19 or less than 18, <coughs> minor, if it's higher than 60 or 65, that would be defined senior. And then else, everything else is going to be A for now. Um, what if it doesn't do anything and it doesn't give you an error message? If you bet the command, if you the command and it hasn't given an error, it hasn't done something. It's done something. You just don't know what it does. Exactly. You don't know what it does. No, we have to see how people look at this. If they change the different rows, once you do, once it doesn't give you error, you have to click on your data set to refresh it. Then you'll see it. Okay, click on your data set to refresh it. Yeah, go back to the very quick data set to refresh and everything. Do you scroll to the so we can see the rest of that search in it? The one you want us to do is the email. So you. <laughs> the H one you is that what you're going to do in the H one, or were you you're not done? Yeah, I would like to have the next slide over 65 and then L over the next one. But given time, I can't stop there. At least that's the example of the two lines, the three of them equal signs, two lines. I never worked in a hard time. Any other questions or comments about uh, changing values in data sets or adding variables? Row, when you use row, is it literally working at the moment or is that a variable now? When you use the row, is it? Does it know that it's what really talking about the one, or are you um, creating like a variable? It, does use use it, okay. uh, it is possible uh, to create a variable role, and you would actually see it up here. You track all the variables there.